My name is Zach Soschke, and I am a not-so-small YouTuber. I'm a long way from hitting numbers like this guy, but just big enough for brands to send me stuff. But not big brands. Small, cool brands. Brands like The Bitter Housewife. The Bitter Housewife makes bitters and is the brainchild of Portland-based Genevieve Brazelton, who creates all the flavor expressions, while her husband Dan runs operations. And I was excited when Dan reached out to me, because looking at their website, they have a lot of very cool-sounding flavors. Hazelnut, lime coriander, and which one would they send me? Well, I was stoked as soon as I opened the box, because I discovered the one flavor I was the most curious about. They're Dead Guy Chicory Bitters. These are flavored with roasted chicory, cacao, and a handful of other thoughtfully selected ingredients, but I expect the Welcome Wagon flavors to be chocolate and coffee. Oh, and they also use Rogue Dead Guy with whiskey as the base, which I've never seen before. If anyone knows any other bitters that use whiskey as the base, let me know in the comments. So at this point in the video, some of you are expecting me to taste these on their own, but I'm not going to. In fact, I've never been a big fan of this practice. Using the bitters as seasoning analogy, things we season our food with aren't meant to be consumed on their own, rather to enhance the flavor of our food. Put another way, some people love to hit the salt lick when no one's looking, and if that's you, live your best life. But rather than consume salt on its own, I'd rather have copious amounts of it added to everything I eat. Also, I love hypertension. And the same goes for bitters, with the possible exception of of Angostura, they aren't meant to be consumed on their own. And by all means, do this if you like, but there are bitters that taste terrible on their own and great in cocktails, and vice versa. To wrap up this tangent, I only care about how they taste in drinks. So to test these, I'm going to make not one, not two, but three classic cocktails, starting with the Old Fashioned, because I'm not reinventing the wheel here, just giving it some new tread. Lastly, I won't be comparing these cocktails to the standard versions. Angostura and Peychaud's are archetypal bitters, and in my opinion, have no competitors. These may be a sub, and a damn good one, but I think comparing them is a little unfair. On to the drink! To my glass, I'm adding a sugar cube, several dashes of my bitters, and the tiniest splash of soda water. Muddle and add a fat two ounces of bourbon. Add the biggest ice you have, stir, garnish with an orange peel, and you're done. Cheers, these. Oh, wow. It's not anywhere near as chocolate or coffee forward as I thought it would be. Rather, I get notes of wood, smoke, and a little bit of chocolate cherry. There's a dense complexity here that makes this a very rewarding sipper. Wife. You want to try this? Ooh, that's nice. That's really nice. Yeah. Thank you. But yeah, solid drink. Up next, the Manhattan. To my mixing glass, I'm adding a few dashes of bitters, an ounce of sweet vermouth, and two ounces of rye. Give it a good long stir, strain into a chilled coupe, and while the standard garnish is a cherry, I prefer a lemon twist. Now this is a Manhattan. Not that there's anything wrong with the actual Manhattan, nobody could have a problem with that drink, but the bitters are talking to the sweet vermouth in a way that kind of makes this a new drink, in a very good way. I get a little bit more of the woodiness in this, a little bit less of the chocolate cherry, but this is a very sexy drink. A few moments later. And now that it's had time to open up in the glass, you do get more chocolate and herbal notes from the chicory. This is an A-plus drink. You gotta try this one. Oh, that's good. Right? Oh, that's so good. Yeah. Double fisting? Yeah! Last up, the Sazerac. First, spritz a rocks glass with absinthe and put it in the freezer. Then to your mixing glass, add a sugar cube, a few dashes of bitters, and two ounces of rye. Muddle the shit out of the cube, add ice, and stir. Strain into your chilled glass, garnish with a lemon twist, and you're done. There's a debate in some circles about whether the peel goes in the glass or not. Personally, I think it should stay on the rim because if it sits in the drink, it will continue to affect the flavor. And it's garnish, not an ingredient. But if you prefer it in the drink, you do you. Nice. The absinthe is barely there, as it should be, but by swapping out the peychauds, the expected licorice notes give way to a kind of nuttiness. This is a very nice drink. Maybe my least favorite of the three, but I do like it. Wanna try this? That's nice too. Good afternoon. I know. Yeah. And I'm keeping this one. Okay. In closing, I highly recommend you check these bitters out. They add a lush, sultry note to stirred cocktails. And based on this product alone, I'm looking forward to trying Bitter Housewife's other flavors. Genevieve and Dan, these are the real deal. Thank you, and cheers. Turn camera.